जी ऑल्सो कुमार yes sir we we have we have uh, data types like uh, int float uh, boolean and uh, hello i'm hearing you Ca character characters like uh, data types we have sir okay um tejashwini so can you tell me what is the basic difference between an integer and a float on answer this is tejashwini uh integer which stores the number uh, mo like mobile number uh we give in uh, int sir uh, float which stores the decimal numbers we use float for decimal numbers hello yeah i'm hearing you tejesh so can you uh, uh, can you reiterate it i can't understand sir can you repeat again sir integer which store, which is used to store the numbers in a program in programming language uh, for example 1 2 3 uh, either in minus uh, numbers for that sir and float which you use to store the decimal values sir. integer not accept the decimal uh, decimal values like 1.2 like that it is not stored in uh, for that we use a float what do you mean by decimal pointers sir what is decimal points decimal points means uh, the number for uh, example is for 1.25 like that sir uh, that are the decimal values uh, pointing uh, points uh, integers means a number like mobile number uh, uh, some uh, uh, 2 4 7 like that sir uh. so how much means uh, uh, what is the value size i can store in an integer that's okay no uh, it's okay i'll pass the question for someone else so taj nisha so can in you tell me this uh, can... just pass the question for someone else uh, i was just trying for nisha so can you tell me yes, what is the size of integer i can store in an int sir integer can store 4 bytes like 10 digit numbers and float also stores four digits but it has the fractional numbers after the decimal point it can store up to 6 to 7 decimal digits sir hello okay cool sunita can you tell me what is a char uh uh Krish, are you asking me, Sumitra Vadivel? Hello. Yes, I'm asking only. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Krish, I have talked that a person called Sumitra. Yeah, uh, care. Uh, we can uh, store in uh, this also a data type. Uh, the size of an care is an uh, two bytes. It stores the um, uh, like a. Uh, Uh, uh characters single sing, single characters it stores in single character uh, inside an a uh, single quotes uh, it uh, java as an um, uh, follows an uh, utf 16 for uh, uh, storing uh, for uh, occupying an uh, bytes for an char like uh, it uh, which occupies a variety of sing, symbol when it when it comes to an ascii code uh, it recognize only an english related symbol but it when it comes to utf 16 uh, which is nothing but unicode transformation format it recognizes uh, 2 power 16 that is uh, 65536 some uh, values uh, different types of symbols uh, uh, the java has an capability to access uh, store those uh, uh, symbols okay awesome thank you so guys so uh, these are really very basics so which you need to never forget about these things so first of all 
we ask you to learn about what is <coughs> what is a variable. So first of all, you need to understand ex I mean, the variable and then how we will be storing this particular you know, data into these particular variables. So I'm just trying to share the screen. So let's get started over here. Hope if you've seen the previous uh, videos, so even in the videos also, the content would be much more better. So I'll just give you a quick recap what we have been discussed on the variables and the data types. Variables is nothing but the name itself. It was saying that variable means it varies time to time. It's a temporary storage which we will have it. Example, so we can see our uh, our mom's kitchen. So here you can go, you can see there. So they will keep dal or they can keep some sugar or they can keep some salt. So everything into one particular jar. Now, if they wanted to change that one, so just they will pour it off, clean it, and then keep into another uh, uh, item into that particular jar. So sometimes they will put sugar, sometimes they will put uh, uh, salt, and sometimes they will put dalda or some dal. So whatever they wanted to keep, they will be keeping into that particular uh, jars, right? If you see here, that is a container. In a container, I can store any particular uh, uh, items. Either I can store salt or chocolates or uh, sweets or I can keep uh, sugar or whatever the things. So that can be help you as a container to store some things. Same way in Java or in any language, in programming languages, variables are nothing but it's a container where it can store any particular data. And this particular data can change consistently. That is where it's called as variable. It means as it changes consistently, the name itself it defines as a variable. So variables are nothing but it's a temporary storage where you can see we can store different type of different data types or different values. OK, so now coming back to here, what are the different data types available in Java? So now when you have this particular thing, now if you go for this is what I just asked you to go through that. So what are the different type data types? We do have it. So basically, we do have uh, these all things are the basic data types. So data types has been classified into two categories. One is primitive data types and non primitive data types. What are primitive data types? Hey, what do you mean by primitive data types? Don't worry, don't get too much involved into it. So that's a, just a name. Just they have been given for it. Now, what are the primitive data types? We have it. So what are the different data types we do have? It means these are the seven data types which you have. Sorry, eight data types we have it in the primitive data type. One is byte, short, int, long, float, double, boolean, and car. So care. So now these are the eight data types which you have it in the primitive data types. So now when it comes to the data types in Java, OK, specifically in Java, if someone asks you, hey, what is the different data types you have? Then you need to say that, hey, I have we have two different type of data types here. One is primitive data type and non primitive data type. Primitive data type consists of byte, short, int. So now if you see here, this is BS. So you can take the first letters of this one. So it's up to you how to remember. Usually I remember the first letters of each when I wanted to remember a long list. So now byte and short, integer and long, and uh, FD, so which is uh, float and double, boolean, char, which is BC. So now if you see here, uh, what it means, now what is the basic differences that we will discuss later? First of all, in the classification, what are the things we have it? So now we have byte and short, int and long, float and double, boolean and char. So now non-primitive data types, what are the things we do have it? So there are three different data types we have. Strings, arrays, classes. So now SSC. So always you remember that all the primitive data types all start with the small letters, whereas non-primitive data types will start with the capital letters. So now you need to understand that all the class names will start with the capital letters, right? So now here, these are the classes. Don't worry what you meant by a class and how it would be. So those things will be discussed as part of the OOPS, uh, OOPS concepts. But as of now, just you can go ahead and see that, hey, there are two different type of primitive, I mean, the, uh, data types. One is primitive data type and non-primitive data type. And under primitive data type, so I do have eight different data types are there. So what are those eight different types, which is the byte short and int long and float double and boolean char. 
So now not primitive data type I have strings, arrays, and classes. Now let's see what, what are the different type of this particular data types are there, right? Now, the, the most important thing is where it can be deferred is in terms of any particular data type can be deferred in two things. One is the size. Based upon the size, how much things I can store. For an example, now in a backpack, I can keep uh, a maximum of uh, four to five pa means four pairs of clothes. But if I wanted to carry a 10 pair of clothes, then backpack is not enough. So then I'll go for a big suitcase, right? So we will have in suitcase three different sizes, right? Small, medium, large. So we'll go for large suitcase and then we'll keep all these things. Based upon the luggage, which you have it, you choose your suitcase, right? The same way, based upon the data which you're going to store, according to that, you will select your data type. Okay, so now, usually by default, so now here, always you need to remember that. If someone asks you what is an integer, don't say that it will store number. Everything is a number. Even 1.200 is called also a number, right? So now if it's a fractional part or decimal number, when you have a decimal number 1.2 or 2.4 or 1.5, even that is also numbers, right? Always you need to remember that integer will stores whole numbers. This is most important. And the whole numbers from where to where it will store is minus 128. We do have the numbers, right? In the number system. So we have the number system, right? So now for an example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So before this one, zero. Before this one, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. We have it, right? So minus 128, two plus 128. If you wanted to store any particular numbers between these particular things, then you'll be using byte. Byte also useful to store the whole numbers. That's it, nothing more. Now, what is the size of this particular byte? We will be having one byte of space. How many bytes? Okay, how many bits make one byte? Eight, 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 eight bits. Eight bits. Eight bits. What is a bit? Eight. What is a bit? Bit, B-I-T. It is one or zero. One or zero. So now, now for an example, I'll be having one byte means so one one zero zero one one. What were the random numbers? So now this would be like on and off. So if you wanted to make a one byte, so this is the code. So don't go for the byte coding and all these things. It might confuse you. But remember that eight bits will make one byte. Now thousand twenty four bytes make one. One kilobyte. ABC. Kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes make? One megabyte. One GB. One megabyte. See now, first KB, next 1024 KB is equal to? One MB. One mega. One MB. One means 1024 MB equal to? One gigabyte. Gigabyte. Okay, this is called gigabyte. Okay, or gigs, they will say that. Megabyte. Kilobyte. Now 124 means 1024 gigabytes make one terabyte. 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 It is called terabyte. 1024 terabytes, sorry, one uh, 1000 terabytes. 1024 terabytes okay. equal to terabyte. Terabyte. One terabyte. 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 Okay. Terabyte. Okay. Terabyte. Okay. Terabyte. Okay. Terabyte. Okay. Terabyte. Okay. Is what you guys are doing. So can you go on mute? Okay, so now KBs, MBs, GBs, terabytes, and uh, terabytes, and then gigabytes, zettabytes. So now this is what are uh, sizes. Now here, it was saying that one byte means for an example, if you wanted to store any particular whole number from minus 128 to 127, so we would be using one byte for this one. Now, if I wanted to store the value of minus 32,768 to 32,767, 
then this is called short and what how many bytes you want to use means how much size it will take us two bytes means 16 bits now if you wanted to store from this value minus 2 to the power of okay 10 digits followed by 10 digits and here we have the 10 digits 2 followed by plus 2 power followed by 10 digits then this is this stores 4 bytes of space and this is where the integer and it stores 4 bytes now when it goes to long it have 8 bytes so from minus 9 15 digits to plus 9 15 digits if you have been stored then this is called long and if you see here all these things will store only the whole numbers so now the next thing is on float so float is nothing but it stores the fractional numbers so which is called the decimal numbers the decimal numbers are for an example now I have been divided with a fraction for an example now three divided by two so now this divides with 1.5 so now this 1.5.5 so these are called decimal values or precision precision values or fractional part of three when it divided by three so we have been discussed we have been learned all these things in our childhood in our uh, math right now for the next three four sessions all we need to recover our uh, childhood maths now we will be having this is this is the when we when a particular number having the fractional part then this is called a decimal number okay so the fractional part is called as a decimal number and it will these values are called as precision values now 1.52 how many precision values we have two if it is now it is five now if it is this, then it have overall six precision values. So float can store six to seven precision values. If you're having more precision values, then so now I have eight, nine, one, two, three, five. If we have more number of values, double. Then it will work. Double. 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 Okay, so now the size has become more. So I have more number of cloths than I told you, right? I'll go for big suitcase. When I have more number of precision values, then I go for double. If I have less number of precision values, then I'll go for float. If I have anything, so now actually you should, what we'll do is byte, short, we will not use. Directly we will use integer itself. Because anyways, the integer can handle both the things, right? See, I have only four to five cloths but still I take the suitcase so that it will be easy for me. Even though there is a space, it's okay. Rather than for every sizes, rather than buying that. So I, I bought a bigger size suitcase. Same way, by default, we will use integer, but you should know how to use bytes and uh, uh, shots also, so that you can know that how to use it. But recurrently in our programs or in our day to day, we'll directly go with the integer rather than the bytes and shots. Okay, so now we have been discussed float and uh, double. Now the next one is uh, boolean. What do you mean by boolean? For false, it's store. What is boolean? For false. So boolean will have Which only can one particular true or value, false. whether it is true or false. 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 True or false. So now either it can be true or it can be false either only one value we wanted to keep over here so if you want it because many of your programs may see that hey, if this is true then do this if it's false don't do this so that is what we will be discussing in, as part of booleans now car car will take two bytes it will store the single characters or it stores the letter of ascii values so ascii that means for every letter in English, we have the ASCII code. So if you see that, if you could just go here and we can see ASCII values, if you see that, so these are called the ASCII values. So now you just, you can go for here, you can see that ASCII values. See now, 
what do you meant by ascii values and then how it would be so i'll not discuss that one because there is a, it's a conversion see for an example now for abc if you see that ea if you wanted to have it so this is the ascii value of a b and moreover you need to remember that the capital letters will have different ascii values and small letters will have the different ascii values and 9 8 so 7 6 you numbers you have seen it right for everything they will be having a different ascii values for a space bar so now these are the binary numbers sorry these are the binary numbers and these are the ascii values of that particular binary numbers so how uh, how why 0 is 48 why uh, 1 is 49 so that conversion of ascii values that it, we need to understand what is ascii and then how it can be converted so those things we need to understand okay so if, uh, so anyways i'll not get into that one so just you you need to remember that if you wanted to store any particular ascii values or a single character then you will be using the char but uh, how why or where we will use this one is when you write any particular big algorithms um in that particular algorithms we might be using this particular ascii uh, the, for, we might be using this particular char so very rarely from in our programming we will be using this one but just you need to know that what is a char what is the size of char and what the values will be going to store into the char so that would be good enough for us so now we have been discussed what are the things we discussed what is a variable what are the different type of uh, data types we have and uh, what are the different data types difference between each data type and what is the size of a data type and what is the values which we need to store do so we wanted to remember all this particular number obviously not not really required but at least you should know that minus 2 followed by the 10 digits to the plus 2 10 digits minus 9 followed by the 15 digits to plus uh 15 digits followed by 9 so that is how we need to remember that no need to remember the complete number no one will remember also and the most important thing in the interviews the people might ask you what is the size of an integer 4 what is the size of a long eight so float double so these these are the frequently asked questions uh, in the interviews the people might be asking you so now just you will be defining that and then you will be doing it so now this is an exercise they have been given so i'll just need to go here and that's an integer right so now i have been given that and always remember java is case sensitive you need to give the uh, small letters only so you can't give the i capital these capitals we want we can't give this one and the most important thing is see if you learn now and it will be much more better and easy if you don't learn so even the previous batch students also did the same mistake they have been practiced with a different uh, uh, coding standards so then they in the real time project also they are having facing the same problem now when you are defining these particular values or the variable names so now always you need to remember one thing so <clears throat> if i given this int a comma b so this is called declaration hey did you declare your variables so this is variable declaration and now when i started to assign the values a equal to 0 okay or a equal to 100 so now this is called assigning the values so the value is assigned always remember that right side value right hand side value will store into the left hand side so now whatever the value i have been defined here and kept a single equal to then this is called assignment operator equal to is an assignment operator so that this value will go and store into this particular value now a equal to 100 now here what we will try to do int a comma b so as an integer i'm declaring this particular value and i'm trying to assigning this particular value now so we can do the declaration and assigning in the same line also a equal to int 100 so now like this i can give it so here i declared and i assigned the value and we can have another uh, 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 another particular topic also which is called initialization so now i initialize the value equal to 100 why when we say this initialization means if this particular value is getting incremented or decremented incremented means 101 102 103 104 if it is incrementing then i'll call it as this particular value as initialized value and decremented means 
100 99 98 97 96 95 94 93 92 91 so if it is decreasing then it is called as decremental value so incremental values and decremental values so now what you need to remember is so this incremental and the decremental values if you are doing it then this will be this particular variable will be calling as initialized value okay so these three differences you need to understand declaration assigning initialization declaration means till now we, we only we have been declared the variables but we don't assign the values assigning means we are assigning the value to a particular variable and initialization means if at all the particular variable is getting changed with an increment or decrement then this is called initialization so this is the basic terminology which we need to remember understood any questions excuse me any questions on this excuse me sir can you hear me sir yes yeah uh uh for so int a is equal to 100 sir first we will uh, assign that in the next line if we assign int a equal to 101 then it is called as a initialized value no 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 see you, you need to remember one thing <clears throat> initialization will be coming as part of your looping concept normally see for an example what it will happen for example i said that in, uh, okay int a equal to 100 yes sir now once again i given a equal to 101 what it will print if i print a now 101 it will print 101 because this will override this value right. now this is not initialization so now for an example a equal to 100 i have been given and i run a loop what do you meant by loop you don't worry so if loop means it will iterate in the same if it iterating then it will go for 101 102 okay okay 103 so next, uh, 104 next loop they'll uh, increase okay so if the value is getting increased in a loop, then we will say that, hey, now see now, value of A equal to 101, value of A equal to 102, value of 3 equal to 103. It is over, overlapping with the value incremented. But still, the first time which you have been initialized, from where it need to start, the loop need to start. See, now I can start from 100 or I can start from 50 or I can start from 0. So now from where it was starting, then that particular point is called as initialization of the value. So in the looping, when you go, you will understand this concept more clear. Okay, thank so you. So always you remember that now when the A value is getting changed consistently, either it to incremental or decremental, so the starting point of that particular value is called initialization. Got it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Any more? Fine. Any more questions? Sir, what is the meaning of uh, iteration, sir? Iteration. See now the iteration is nothing but doing the same activity again and again. So that is called iteration. So for an example, um, these are iterative classes. Means every day at morning 10 o'clock, this will this 10 to 11 o'clock, we will have the sessions. Means the weekly iterative sessions. Means complete week. Every day, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, this class will happen. So now this is the first iteration. Or else the good example is, uh, good example is, some people go to the temple and then they revolve around the temple, right? First round, second round, third round, fourth round, sixth round. So they will re revolve around the same temple, right? So now this is called iteration. So first iteration, second iteration, fourth iteration, fifth iteration, means doing the same activity consistently uh, and the same activity consistently. So that is called iteration. Okay. So, so okay. now when you go for uh, the looping. Actually, like uh, if we have some uh, two functions uh, in the first function, it will uh, execute all the things. And uh, if if there is any uh, a break or something, again, it will go and repeat the same function. So something happens like that. Correct, sir? that is not okay i'll uh, the, when we have it in the function and calling them that is different 
looping and in the looping we will get this iteration so don't get worried don't think too much just hold on for one or two days so that you can see that concept so when it comes to the functions or when it comes to the iteration so that you will see it there okay okay sir. okay any other questions here any other questions sir okay go ahead so you will understand it tomorrow so now this is called as assignment operator this is called as um, comparative operator so what is this one is here this value will be assigned to a where this is comparing this value with this value see now right hand side value we are going to assign into 10 so this is okay. assignment so the name itself it was saying assignment so this is comparative operator means this is trying to compare this value here in the value may be 100 or 200 or whatever the value which you stored you try to compare with this value so comparing the lhs which is the rhs right hand side value with the left hand side value then this is called comparative operator so this is what the basic difference between these two so assignment operator and comparative operator got it is can initialization condition it is valuable or not here it is not about to initialization somya so just this is condition uh, initialization condition increment kada you are asking me or you are telling me i didn't understand that asking sir yes so initialization see now for an example when you wanted to start iterating something so chudama uh, so for an example naku oka value undi 100 ana value undi ee 100 ana value i just wanted to increment so for an example naku nen iteration chesinaapudu then increment aina cheyochu decrement aina cheyochu so when i have did that so it will go for 101 102 103 itla manaku iterate avuthu untundi values perugutu untundi so values manaku eppudaithe periginaapudu so the first value from where it started manaka starting point manaku teliyal kada so that that's the reason we will call this one as initialization so this is the initialization value okay and from there these particular values has been increased so manaku teliyal kada a starting point ni cheyithe idi increase ayindo so from that one we need to get understand so that is where so we will be using this initialization okay either it might be incremental or decremental but from the starting point from where it has been started if you we wanted to know that's the reason we will say that the value is initialized to this so when you go for debugging on all so at that time these particular terminologies will be come comes into the picture okay thank you okay cool so now we we have been discussed about so these things right so now what we wanted to do the next the, as part of this one is we will be trying to discuss about um this particular naming convention or coding standards see now when you write english so the people will check for grammatical mistakes right hey we we need to write past tense we need to write present tense we need to write in future tense we do have different different uh, different different things we will be having it right so now when we have these particular things we will first check the grammar uh, a properly written english the same way when we written the code there would be certain standards to follow for a code especially in the variable declarations so now we know that so this is what the variable declarations right i can use int a and b but it should be followed with a certain standards now what are those particular standards is the first standard is hungarian notation or camel case what is this particular camel case see now you seen it right camel hump will be there right on top of camel like this it will be having it right the same way it starts from the small it goes to the bigger means small letters and bigger letters appended with 
the type of the, 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 uh, the data type. Example, now I wanted to declare for integer. So now when I wanted to declare for integer, now what I need to do, int a, right? I need to write this one as int small letters value a comma, so you know, v capital i small int. We are saying that hey, this variable is an integer data type. So that's the reason I'll be writing this one as int. So now here I'll be keeping this as int. Okay, int v as value and a as capital. So now if you see here, int uh, and v capital and then a capital, int is small. So now this we are saying that hey, this is integer data type. Now if it is a float, letter for that particular value and then a is means you wanted to store a value or b value you can write it that so now this is how we'll be defining so then this is called a camel case so now you'll be defining with the small letter and the capital letter and this will be having with the uh, uh the small and capital and defining the what data type it belongs to it belongs to boolean boolean bln care it's a chr char char and if it is a string we will define as str all these are in the small letters and then the, the value of that the, the name of that particular variable with a capital letter and the string value str value so this is how these values should be defined into this so this is called hungarian notation or a camel notation there is hairline differences between the Hungarian notation and camel notation. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. And there is another no notation called snake notation. See, now the snake is like this. There is continuous things, right? For an example, now what how you, how I'll define is int underscore role number. So now if you see here, if you're using this particular cam means underscores between the variables, then this is called snake notations see now snake is a consistent thing so there is no breaks right so now to means it gives you the more readability of this particular variable by seeing this variable i can understand that it is an integer roll number for an example now you don't have bigger problem because you are writing 10 lines of code or 20 lines of a code so that you know that is an integer imagine that you have written one lakh lines of code by seeing a b how you will understand because there are you have been defined some thousands of uh, variables there in this uh, one lakh lines of code. So if I given A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, if you keep in like this, how you will identify what the value is stored in this? So rather than that, what I'll do is, I'll store that str name. So I can remember that. int roll number, int marks code. So now if I see that, hey, this is the roll number, this is a marks. So always the naming should be having certain standards in defining that and it should be so meaningful to understand what the values it has been stored so this is called the coding notation especially the variable notations so when we go for each and everything so we will talk about that particular standard over there but as of now so here we will be discussing as part of this one as uh, 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 the variable notations which we have been written over here okay so the basic standard so we can use it for camel notation or Hungarian notations, which is uh, start with the small and the capital. And then we can go ahead with writing for this one. Any questions across this? Sir, camel notation, I don't understand. See, camel, see, that is what I'm saying, right? I just, give me a second. I'll open the eclipse and then I'll write for that.
I'm just trying to open the uh, Eclipse and then from there, I just wanted to write and show you something, okay? So for an example now here, I wanted to define a variable. So now what I'll do, I'll give a int a comma b. So now I just define this one. So now this is called declarations. Okay. So now what I wanted to do a equal to a equal to hundred. So now this is what I'll be calling this one as signing values. Or this is what called assignment. Assignment. What assigning the values? Okay. Now the value is assigned. So now, so I so. It's not working for me. Working. Let me take another class. It seems some problem in this. Okay. Let me just take another switch over. Well, so I, I feel there is some problem in my uh, Eclipse. I just wanted to show you this you know, Hungarian notations or these things in the code. Okay, so what else? Uh, anyways, I'll show that one. So now what else we wanted to follow? So we will follow this particular structure. So he, here we have been discussed uh, the variables and the data types. So we will complete this all things by today. So now tomorrow what you guys need to do is you need to complete the typecasting. What do you meant by typecasting and what the different type of typecasting so we do have it and uh, what is meant by Java operators. So in the Java operators, so we do have five categories. So one is uh, uh, arithmetic operator. So now what do you meant by arithmetic operator and how the arithmetic operator will work? Assignment operators and uh, comparison operators and uh, logical operators. So bitwise operators, you just know the information but not implementation required. But for these four operators, so you need to start implementing it. And it is very simple. So arithmetic operators are plus, minus, multiplication, division, modulus, plus, plus, minus, minus. For example, x plus y. So how the value, how much the value it will come. So those things, I don't want to waste the time in the session. So you need to do that and then come back. So you know what it need to do? So it has been defined with this particular values, x value, y value, and then summation of this. So now here the operator is plus operator. So now this is called the arithmetic operators. Now plus operator, minus operator, my multiplication, division, modulus, these all things will fall into the arithmetic operators. And then assignment operators. Assignment operators are equal to, uh, my plus equal to, minus equal to, multiply equal to, division equal to, modulus equal to, not equal to, and equal to. So these three things, it's okay, you can leave it. The last three things, you no need to work about it, but I'm going to just go through that and then finish it off. And comparative operators, double equal to, not equal to, greater than equal to, less than equal to, greater than, less than. So these values we need to perform. And logical operators also, we need to do it. So tomorrow what I wanted to do is, you people to complete the type casting. Type casting means what? What are the different type castings we have it? And then operators, what we have. So those things, just you need to implement, see the video, and then come back to the session. Okay? Any questions? Okay. 
Yes, sir. I have one doubt. So uh, here, uh, as we take right, a is equal to uh, 10 and a is equal to is equal to 10. That uh, equal to is like compatible operator, right? So it Not will. Uh, compatible. It's a comparative operator. The comparative at operator. Uh, so mm -hmm. it works for only the same numbers, so we can take different numbers as you take uh, a is equal to 10 and a is equal to equal to 10, right? It's not like that. So for an example, now I given the a value equal to 100. OK, now I just wanted to check. A equal to equal to 200. Have been given. Now when I start to run this one. You see the output is false because it is not matched. So if I wanted to match that one, what I need to compare? I need to compare with 100. So yes, you sir. do this operators exercise tomorrow so that you will understand. Now it printed okay. me today. So that you just practice it. See, always once you see now whatever the basic doubts you have it, you need to implement and then come back so that you can you can have the clarity on this. Okay, so now this is where we have been done the declaration and then assignment. Now we are keeping these values. Now, what I'm suggesting you people to do is, so when you're defining a particular integer, int int value equal to 100. So now you can write that value a equal to 100. And the same thing we can give that int okay, int, that's a small letter, value underscore b e equal to 200 okay so now the same thing int int value value underscore c equal to 300 now you can define these particular values how much you wanted so this would be a meaningful value right so rather than having this and always remember variables will not accept the spaces if you given the spaces, it will not accept. Special characters, wild characters, we shouldn't give it. There are certain standards to define a particular variable. Okay, so this is called the camel notation. So if you see it, these are the small uh, letters it started with. And here we are appended with a data type. So for an example, if I'm defining with a string, so this is a non-primitive data type. So now str name. Okay, equal to so here I'll be writing with asterisk. That's it. You know, when you're defining a particular variable, they need to follow certain standards for this one. So that is what this standard. Okay, so that is how you guys need to practice it and then do this one. Hmm. Okay, so this is where it is called as a Hungarian notation or camel notation for this. So this is how we will be proceeding with this particular implementations. However, go back, practice it well, all the data types and all. So now if you wanted to comment, I, I can comment with this with double slashes. Okay. Now it is commented. Now what is the shortcut key for this one? Control forward slash. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to control remove that, same control, control slash and remove that. Yes. If I wanted to comment multiple statements, single line comment is control forward slash and removing control same slash. Now, if I wanted to uh, comment this one, control shift slash. Okay. So now it is multiple lines commenting. You seen it, right? It commented the multiple lines slash star and star slash. That will, that is what for doing the multiple commenting what is the shortcut key for this one control shift slash okay i think it's already 11 so let's get start let's get stopped here so proceed further with this implementation part let's see tomorrow i wanted to see you to complete the complete type casting and then the operators 